Are you looking for some ideas to reset your year right now? This video is going to help you figure out all of the things that you could do to give a jump start to that new year feeling now. I believe in you and I believe that a little bit of intentionality, I believe that if you take one day and maybe even do one, two or three of the things that I'm going to tell you is going to set you up for success. Not only is it going to help you to feel intentional about starting this new year, but it's going to give you hindsight and insight into what went well this year. What did not? What did you learn? If we don't take time to learn from our past. It's kind of like, did we live at all? Maybe make yourself some tea, light a candle, set the mood, maybe put on some fake fireplace action on your TV. The first thing that I want to challenge you to do is to look back at your ear. I like to use my photos on my phone and I do a bullet journal. So I take a peek at my bullet journal and look at the months past. I get a sense of every month, what, what did I do? Where did I go? What did I... What did I learn? Those images trigger memories in my brain and I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that we did all of that this year. I feel like if you don't go back and take a peek at what you did, you kind of miss out on the nostalgia and the just the feeling of gratitude that you actually got to do some things. Because sometimes the end of the year can be a little bummer when we think of it as, oh, I didn't accomplish much. Looking back at your year is going to set you up for realizing that maybe you did do a lot and you just didn't remember. So after you've gone down memory lane for 2023, think about the things that you're truly grateful for. I believe that gratitude is a magnet for miracles. When we see our year in the scope of God, ask God maybe for a new perspective if you're feeling like you didn't accomplish much this year or you didn't get to do much. Figure out a way to see your life in a different scope. Write down three of the main things you're super grateful for. Maybe a person, maybe a thing you got to have, maybe a thing you got to be or become, maybe something you learned, maybe something someone did for you, maybe something you did for someone. Figure out a way to have gratitude for 2023. Now I want you to take a minute and look back at your year and write down three simple ordinary things from your everyday life that you are proud of yourself for. Maybe you didn't hit that one goal. Maybe you didn't hit some marker this year, but let's think of the things that we did do this year. Celebrate the tiny victories and I bet you anything that you're going to be encouraged and empowered to be better next year, but not to beat yourself up for the things that you didn't get done this year. Next, wisdom is a powerful thing. Wisdom often comes when we reflect on the past. So we're going to take a little bit of time and do a little journaling. I'm going to give you a few journaling lines so that you can gain wisdom from the things that you experienced this last year. List the three key takeaways from work-related experiences or your life experiences from this year. Did you face any obstacles or setbacks or traumas that you need to still maybe process, write it out. Give yourself some time, maybe five, 10 minutes of journaling. If you need to write a letter to someone, write a letter to someone. Listen, you can burn the letter. You can rip the letter up. There is nothing better than taking off all of the ugh of 2023 and leaving it behind. You are going to be so glad that you wrote about your challenging experiences after you do it. It'll feel like a soul shower. Now I want you to think of four things that are setting you back from becoming the person you want to become. Maybe think of a person. Is there a person in your life that is toxic? Maybe that discourages you or doesn't believe in you. Is there um, a thing that you do that is a bad habit that is preventing you from being the very best that you can become? Is there an emotion that you're holding on to? Maybe you feel some resentment or unforgiveness towards someone or something and you feel like you just can't move on. Write these things down and ask God, invite God to come into your experience and heal those things and remove those things from your experience. That allowing yourself to feel all the feels from the hardness and the challenges of 2023 could be really challenging. Take some time for yourself right now and just enjoy maybe a bath, go on a walk, do something physical so that you can get all this stress out. Maybe go to the gym, 
take a boxing class, take it out on some physical exertion, and then come back to the video and be energized to move forward with your yearly reset plan. Allowing yourself time to fully process what you've been through is crucial to your well-being. It's crucial for your mental health. It's crucial for your heart and your soul. All right, now that we've gotten to do some kickboxing and kicking out a little bit of stress from the year, we're going to set our eyes on a clear vision for 2024. One of the best words I ever got from God was, I needed clarity. Clarity was a huge word for me a couple years ago, and I knew the Lord was really pushing this on me because I heard the word clarity everywhere. There was even a girl named Clarity in our soccer team. <laughs> just to, you know, just so that God could be like, I'm, t I'm telling you, I'm telling you, get clear on what you want and what you need. We're going to be establishing a clear vision for your 2024. This is where you are invited to dream big, friend. This is where you're invited to do a vision board. You can use magazines and cut out a bunch of magazine cutouts. You can use Pinterest and do a digital vision board. Get clear on the vision that you want for yourself for 2024. Do you want to have more consistency in your workouts? Put a little workout thing on your vision board. Would you like to save more money in this new year? Put a savings box and put the amount of money that you are going to save by the end of 2024. When you do things in advance and you set a vision and a goal for yourself that is on paper this allows god to come with you also pray pray to god for your vision pray to god for vision pray to god about your vision and pray that he gives you capacity to execute your vision when you ask god to help you with this he will move heaven and earth i'm not saying that you are going to put a ferrari on your vision board and god's just going to give you a ferrari god knows our heart and our hearts are deceitful when we give and surrender our vision to the lord what he does is he gives us more than we could possibly imagine the bible says if you are evil and give good gifts to your children how much more will i give to you god is saying we're evil and we would never just like give our, our kids a serpent or, or a stone for a Christmas present. We want to bless our kids because we love them so much. Just as in the same way that you want to bless your kids if you have kids or if you have nieces, nephews, a friend, however you want to bless someone, think of that in a thousand times it. That's how much God wants to bless you. He wants to partner with you. He wants to be by your side. He wants to be a participant in your life. Invite him and in, invite him into the vision and ask for him to deter you from anything that isn't really for you and to give you clear vision for what he wants you to do on this earth. Wow. Now let's get to a little visualization. I can't say that word. Visualize yourself where you want to be next year. Think about the things that you would want where are you located who is with you you define success as what journal this out i define success as what does your day look like what does a day look like from morning to nighttime what is your most excellent most beautiful beloved day look like write these things down when you allow yourself to dream like this you are designing your own life. You're designing the way that you want to live. Yes, life is hard and it can get busy and life comes in the way, but you have power inside of you. You have a vision, you have a heart, you have breath in your lungs, and you can make and design the year that you want to design. Obviously, there's going to be ebbs and flows to the year. It's not like it's going to go perfectly all the time and it doesn't. Life is hard, but we do these things so that life is worth it, right? We're going to live a life that is worth living because that's what we're here to do. We're here to encourage one another to live a meaningful and impactful life. And as you're gaining more clarity on the year, think of a word. I always like to pray that God would give me a word to focus on. I always set a word and then I go and I find scripture that goes in line with that word. This year, my word is seen. And here's how I got to that word, okay? I was praying and crying the other night because I felt so lonely. I felt so invisible and unseen. I'm, I've had a, quite the year. It's been a really tough year for me. I have felt irrelevant and old. I just turned 40. Uh, there was a lot going on in my mind about that number and turning that number. And I just felt like God was 
inviting me to a different way and a different perspective from that. So maybe write down the words that the enemy is attacking you with. Like, are you feeling worthless? Are you, are you feeling lethargic? Are you feeling like you're not smart? Like, what is it that you're feeling that is bad? Write that in a notes app in your phone and then ask God, what is the truth about me? What does the truth of God say? Does the truth of God say that I am lonely and unseen and irrelevant and old and invisible? No, if I turn to God's word, I read different things about myself. I found scripture. I, I literally Googled. I, I Googled Bible verses for when I feel unseen. I found so many scriptures. So a scripture that talks about God seeing me. I, I found John 10, 14, 15. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me. And I know the father and I lay down my life for my sheep. See? God already there is telling me he knows me. I don't have to be unseen. I don't have to remain feeling unseen because God's word is powerful. I wrote other scripture that declares God's love for me and encouragement for me. I wrote Jeremiah 12, 3. It says, but you, O Lord, know me. You see me and test my heart toward you. Psalm 33, 18. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him and those who hope is in his unfailing love. I wrote Jeremiah 1, 5 down. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you of prophet to the nations. Wow. Tell me that God's word isn't miraculous and worth knowing. I wrote a declaration for my year. I wrote, I am important in God's eyes no matter how I perform. I am seen and loved and watched over by his grace and mercy. I will be kept in his perfect peace when my eyes are fixed on Christ. I will trust you, Lord, in 2024 and always, for my God is the eternal rock. I was made by the hands of the Almighty for this time and in this body. Before he formed me in the womb, he knew me. And before I was born, he consecrated me. He appointed me a prophet to the nations. The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen me when my heart is fully committed to him. So I do not fear, for he is with me. I will not be dismayed, for he is my God. He will strengthen me, and he will help me, and he will uphold me with his righteous right hand. Friend, sometimes we need to declare God's word out of our mouth to encourage ourselves and our soul. Do this for yourself. I pray that you find a way to combat the enemy. If he is telling you that you're ugly, that you're not special, that you're not important, tell him who you are based on God's word. And I'm telling you this because I need to hear this. I have lived most of my life feeling unseen and lonely because I have not activated the word of God into my life. And now that I have the word of God and I can see the difference that it makes in my life, it would be such a shame if I didn't share it with you. I pray that you would take the time to do this declaration for yourself, that you would take time to declare over yourself the love of God. And I got this idea from Bianca Oltoff. Thank you so much, Bianca. I saw her on a podcast with Candace Cameron Burr. And oh my gosh, I, I wept. I wept when she said that she challenged us to make a declaration. So thank you so much, Bianca and Candace, for the podcast. It was truly life-changing. And I'm so grateful for it and I did the declaration and now I hope that you will do it as well because if you do it then you're going to be on fire for Christ your, your year next year might still be really tough it might still have heartbreak it might still have setbacks it might still have challenges you might still get hurt you might still get disrespected or disappointed but God is going to walk all of that out with you he's never going to leave you or forsake you Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Make God a part of your vision. He is going to help you figure out how to manage all the things that are going to come to you in 2024. And yes, we can set up all these things, reset our year, blah, blah, blah. But ultimately, God has a plan for all of us. And that plan is sprinkled with some challenges and out of those challenges, we grow. So I pray that you look inward and figure out, hey, I am going to go through some challenges and these are the things that I'm going to do when I am down. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to get ready. I'm going to drink some water. I'm going to go on a walk. I'm going to do some exercise. I'm going to journal. I'm going to pray. I'm going to read scripture over myself and my family and my life. I'm going to give. I'm going to serve someone else that is worse 
off than me. I'm going to uh, be grateful and be grateful for the things that I do have. I'm going to choose to be content in those times when I am down and things aren't going my way. I pray and hope that this video helped you. I really hope that this New Year Reset video is inspiring you to reset your year in a way that has God in it so that you will feel anchored and you will feel seen and you will feel whole because He died so that you would have all those things. Jesus became poor so that you could become rich. Come on, that's a good word. You have become rich because of what Christ has done for you. You have no idea what God has planned for your life. He says that he's going to do exceedingly and beyond all that you can think or imagine. I believe that God has big plans for you. Do not lose your faith. Do not lose your hope. No matter what this year looked like, do this reset and figure out a way that you're going to try again. Try again. Try again. Get up again. Try one more time. Try the next time. Don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your life. Don't give up on big dreams with God. He is going to give you what you need for 2024. And only He is able to give you the capacity for, for what you're going to experience. And only He is worthy of all of our praise. I hope that you're encouraged and inspired to start your 2024 with God, with faith, and with a little bit of wisdom from the past. Merry Christmas from my heart to yours. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next week, God willing. Adios!